The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The Christian life is a call to repentance, growth, and perfection. Matthew 5, 48. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. We are called to pursue perfection, embarking on a transformative journey that shapes, nurtures, and molds us into the likeness of Christ. Just as the early apostles were labeled Christians in Antioch due to their exemplary lives that mirrored Christ's, we too, as believers, are entrusted with the responsibility of representing Him faithfully. Though we are not Jesus Himself, our way of life should unmistakably reflect His presence within us. As we strive to be worthy ambassadors, we carry His message of love and grace wherever we go. There are some untold behaviors that shouldn't be found in the life of a Christian or any genuine child of God. Here are four of them. Using grace as a license to perpetually live in sin. Sin encompasses any action that contradicts the principles and teachings outlined in God's Word. In a society where sin is glamorized and presented as an attractive choice for people of all ages, it is crucial for Christians not to be lured in by its deceptive appeal. Sin possesses an alluring and captivating quality, but as followers of Christ, we must not exploit God's grace as a license to indulge in sinful behavior. Although we live in this world, our identity and allegiance lie beyond its confines. By embracing sin, we provide the devil with a position of power in our lives. When we allow sin to become a habit and succumb to the frivolities and distractions of this world, we grant the devil a foothold in our spiritual journey. Ephesians 4, 27, neither give place to the devil Grace cannot be used as a justification for sinning. This assertion is a deceitful lie that originates from the depths of hell. The devil, through his agents, is actively propagating this agenda to mislead naive Christians. Some individuals mistakenly believe that once they are saved and have entered into a covenant through the blood of Christ, they have the freedom to engage in any behavior they desire because they assume God's grace will cover it all. However, as believers, we must firmly reject this false doctrine and not allow ourselves to be swayed by its deceptive allure. Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Pretense. In our midst, there are believers who resemble the Pharisees and Sadducees of old, outwardly. They display great enthusiasm and passion for spiritual matters. But behind closed doors, their actions do not align with the image they project. They strive to create an impression of being spiritual and deep. Yet in reality, they are devoid of true substance. As we are warned in 2 Timothy chapter 3, these are the manifestations of counterfeit Christianity that will arise in the last days. 2 Timothy 3, 5 having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Make a firm commitment to wholeheartedly embrace your Christian faith, not just as a part-time endeavor, but as a full-time dedication. Let your actions and words align harmoniously, whether you are under the scrutiny of the entire world or in moments when you are alone and unseen. Let the pursuit of holiness be your unwavering focus. Allow your relationship with God to be genuine, marked by authenticity, purity, righteousness, and inner peace. It is important to remember that the grace of God is always available to help us grow and deepen our connection with Him. However, we must refrain from being dishonest or deceptive in our approach. We do not need to put on a false show or deceive others in order to receive honor, even if we were to succeed in deceiving those around us. We cannot deceive God. Instead, approach God just as you are, allowing Him to refine and build you up according to His own perfect design. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men, being unequally yoked, navigating the complexities of our world, can be challenging, 
especially in the face of cancel culture. Choosing not to conform to what is deemed progressive can result in severe consequences. However, even amidst the ever-changing tides of society, the foundation of God remains unwavering. He is constant and unchanging. From yesterday to today and forever, His teachings regarding being unequally yoked still hold true. Being unequally yoked does not imply hostility towards those who hold different views than us. It simply means that we should not compromise our identity in Christ and conform to popular opinions solely for the sake of fitting in or being accepted. Instead, we are called to demonstrate the love of Christ to everyone around us, regardless of their faith, creed, or opinions. Our mission is to share the message of hope and the light of Christ while staying true to our foundation in Him. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Stop being a Christian of convenience. Christianity is not a mere religious affiliation. It is a way of life. Our commitment to Christ extends beyond religious ceremonies or gatherings with fellow believers. It encompasses every moment of our existence. Day and night, throughout the week, we are called to embody the life of Christ in every aspect of our being and carry His presence wherever we go. Our words, thoughts, actions, and deeds should consistently reflect our devotion to Him. Let us not settle for a Christianity that is convenient or designed to blend in with the crowd, seeking to be labeled as a different kind of Christian. We must not allow shame or intimidation to hinder us from living boldly for Christ. He is worthy of being showcased and celebrated without reservation or apology. Our lives should serve as a radiant testimony to His love and truth, so that others can unmistakably see that we are wholeheartedly living for Him. Revelation 3, 15 and 16 I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. The phrase, to confess him, holds a deeper meaning than simply making a verbal declaration. It involves aligning our lives in a way that testifies to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself emphasized the significance of confessing him before others. He assured that anyone who openly acknowledges him will be acknowledged by him before God and his angels in heaven. Conversely, those who deny him on earth will be denied by him before God and his holy angels. The underlying idea is this. When we boldly confess Christ before people, He, in turn, will bear witness to us before God and His heavenly host. This has profound implications, especially when facing the ultimate judgment before God. Jesus will stand as a righteous witness, attesting to the faith of those who embraced Him as their Savior. It is crucial to comprehend that Jesus is the only gateway to heaven. He declared in John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our access to God is exclusively through Jesus. Are you denying Jesus in your life? Are you hesitant to be known as a Christian among your social circles? Are you a Christian only on Sundays while concealing your faith throughout the rest of the week? Does the fear of being labeled prevent you from openly professing Jesus Christ. It is imperative to understand that it is impossible to please both God and the world simultaneously. You must make a choice. Either offend Jesus and please the world, or offend the world and please Jesus. Jesus himself warned that following him would cause division, even within families. He stated in Matthew 10, 34 through to 36, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. It is one thing to verbally declare, Jesus Christ is Lord, but it is an entirely different matter to obey his will and commandments. Our actions must align with our words. 
When we surrender our lives to Christ, we no longer belong to a group that lives according to their own desires and pleasures. We become children of God, although our flesh may constantly struggle against God's will. We have the ability to bring it under subjection by surrendering ourselves to His teaching and guidance. We experience the daily leading of the Holy Spirit. God has equipped us with everything we need to live a holy life through His Spirit. Therefore, let us strive to walk in obedience, allowing His transformative power to work in and through us. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? If you're not willing to repent and the Lord Jesus Christ said except you repent you shall all likewise perish.